S corporations represent the most common form of new business operation in the United States. Hi, Bob Jennings here. Let's answer some of those questions that you may have. I have 10 points to recognize with an S corporation. Let's start by recognizing that these entities represent something that generally requires an attorney or an accountant to set one of these up. I don't recommend you do it yourself. Don't try to save a few bucks because it's going to cost you in the long run. Go to the attorney, go to the accountant. Why? They require some formality. They're hard to stop. They're hard to stop. That's point number one. Point number two, an S corporation, because it's a formal, separate legal entity established with your Secretary of State, requires a fair amount of formality. You have to have annual meetings, board of director minutes. You have to have reports on an annual basis. So our number two factor is there is a fair amount of formality involved in an S corporation. Our number three factor is that you have to have a separate checking account, separate books and records, et cetera, et cetera. Don't commingle your personal business with an S corporation or you're going to lose one of the main advantages we'll talk about later on. If you watched our C corporation tape, you're thinking, well, this sounds similar. They are similar for a while. So our first three points are hard to start and stop, formality required, formal set of books and records. Okay. Number four, just like with a C corporation, you do have to have a federal identification number, which your accountant will be able to obtain for you. Number five, the distinct advantage of the S corp is that it has a liability limitation. If the S corporation gets sued, the most you can lose is what you've invested in the S corporation. Your own personal assets aren't on the hook. Similarly, it's a little bit easier to raise cash in an S corporation than it is in many other business forms. Now those five factors are just like they are in a C corporation. Now we change. Factor number six. If you watched our C corporation video, you remember me saying one of the distinct disadvantages of a C corporation is the fact that you have a double tax. The corporation pays tax and the owners pay tax again. That does not exist in an S corporation. Why? Because S corporations don't pay tax. They act as a funnel. What do I mean? All the profits get poured into the top of the funnel and the S corporation doesn't pay tax on it because coming out of the bottom of the funnel, which is plugged into the owner's mouths, is the income. And the owners will pay tax on their share of the income coming out of the bottom of the funnel. The S corporation fills out a tax return, but it's merely an information return because the owners pay tax on their share of profits of the S corp. Ah, a tremendous advantage of the S corporation form of doing business. Well, what about factor number seven, fringe benefits? I like to say that a C corporation is always a best. The self-employed sole proprietorship is the worst, and somewhere in the middle is the S corporation. When I'm talking about fringe benefits for the owners of the business, the S corporation is okay. It's not great. It's not horrible. It's just average. Okay, so it's okay on point number seven. Point number eight, the losses of an S corporation. Distinct advantage here, if an S corporation loses money, shareholders or owners of that S corporation get to deduct their share of those losses up to the amount of their investment. What do you mean? Let's say that you've started your own S corporation and you put $20,000 in there. Maybe it's money you had, maybe it's money you even borrowed personally and put into the company. You're allowed to deduct losses up to that $20,000 in a year. What if the S corporation lose more than $20,000? No, you can't deduct more than you've invested, but you at least get to deduct those losses and you don't get that treatment in all forms of, of business operations here in the United States today. Number nine, so number eight was the fact that you do get to deduct those losses personally. Number nine, you take your money out of an S corporation as a salary. Occasionally we run up against a really bad tax preparer who advises you don't take a salary out of an S corporation, take everything as a dividend. Folks, run. That's horrible advice. You're guaranteed an audit. The penalties are greater than whatever payroll taxes you are going to pay. Pay some salary out of that S corporation. Once you've paid yourself a reasonable salary, point number nine, then we get to point number 10. You are allowed to take a dividend out of an S corporation over and above a reasonable salary. Now, why would I do that? Because I don't have to pay Social Security and Medicare costs on it. So I don't have the double tax issue that I had with the regular corporation, and I don't have to pay payroll taxes. There's your 10th and final factor on S-Corps, a major advantage. Let's review the 10 factors. Number one, 
They are hard to start and stop, so you need an accountant and an attorney to get them started. Number two, they're a formal entity. You file papers with the Secretary of State, you have annual meetings, reports, board of directors, etc. Number three, you have to have a separate checking account, books and records, etc. Number four, you got to have a federal identification number, which your accountant will be able to get for you. Number five, your liability is limited to the amount of money that you invest in that S corporation, and you have a little bit better chance to be able to raise more money. Number six, there is no tax that an S corporation pays. All of the income flows through to the shareholders, and they pay tax on their share, but the S corporation itself pays no tax. Number seven, if the S corporation loses money, the shareholders get to deduct their share of the loss, but they're only allowed to deduct the total of what their investment may have been. So they can't deduct more than that, but they do get to deduct their share of losses. All right? Number eight, fringe benefits. An S corporation is just average for fringe benefits. It's okay, it's not horrible, it's not great, but it's better than many other forms of business. Number nine, you do have to take a salary out. If you're working and there's a profit, you have to pay yourself a reasonable salary out of the S corporation. And finally, number 10, after you pay yourself a reasonable salary, you might be able to pay yourself a dividend. You don't have double tax and you don't have payroll tax on that dividend. For further information, please visit us at the website at the bottom of the screen or feel free to call us at the number that you see here. Bob Jennings, thanking you again for listening.